Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the Viewer's Choice build the Edward M4A1 Sherman. <clears throat> so where I left off last time I was getting ready to do some paint. So uh, I've got everything ready all the appropriate parts on uh, sticks <clears throat> and ready to go. So for priming I'm going to be using the Steinle Res Gray the reason I'm using gray instead of black is twofold. Number one, on darker kits, um, I like to use a gray primer. Uh, it just makes it easier to see where I've sprayed it, <clears throat> especially in you know tight spots. <clears throat> Excuse me. And number two, um, because I have some white to put on underneath here, uh, I think it'll be a little bit easier to spray white over gray as opposed to black. So that's the biggest reason. Um, shadow coat stuff. I'm not doing any of that business. I'm just spraying it straight up and as a departure from the norm I am using my Pache single action siphon feed airbrush and the reason I'm doing that is because the paint bottle holds uh, more um, more primer and uh, it's really easy to clean and um, I'm using a bigger nozzle this is a 0.5 nozzle or whatever it is there's a 3 and a 5 I also have one that I've used but <clears throat> I am not uh, I'm not going to use that so and this gives me a pretty good uh, pretty good pattern here so I'm not going to, you know, obviously spray the whole thing here on camera. I'm just going to show you, um, you know, the beginning parts. All right, so here we go. A lot of people don't like single action airbrushes. And uh, especially don't like gravity feed or uh, siphon feed, and I generally don't prefer them. But for stuff like this, when I'm wanting to uh, shoot a lot of material at once, it's pretty good. Um, I've had this airbrush for quite a while, and I actually had a double action Pache. I think this is the H. And the VL is the double action, but it's also siphon feed. And that thing, it was a really good airbrush, but man, it used a lot of paint. So I didn't, uh, I got to where I didn't use that one much. But it was a good airbrush, and they're very reliable. It's easy to come by parts and all that business. But these uh, nice large bottles are cool. They even have a bigger bottle than that, but I've never found need to use it. The nice thing is, is if say you mixed up a custom color for something and you were going to be using it again soon, um, you can just cap it off and uh, put it away. Another reason I like um, using gray on something like this is because I'm going to be spraying it with uh, olive drab, which is pretty dark. 
and it just makes it easier to see where I've sprayed as opposed to just spraying it on black. It's pretty helpful. Here's something to note. Look right here. See this how it's kind of like weird and pebbly looking almost? <clears throat> if you ever use this stuff, don't fret because that will go away. It's just the nature of Steinle Res. It can look weird going on sometimes, but it self levels very nicely. All right, so the <clears throat> Primer has been applied, and as I said, that weird looking business right there is not there. Turn my other light. Um, <clears throat> Style Res really works great. So, there you have it. Um, so, I'm using flat white Tamiya XF2 to do the white underneath the kit. So the kit has been primed and is ready to go and as you can see that uh, weird lumpy looking part smoothed out nicely. So um, it's ready for paint and what I am going to use for paint is the first color I'm going to be doing is Tamiya XF2 flat white and that is for this lower portion here underneath the sponsons uh, front lower hull rear lower hull and the underside of the barrel so probably what I'm going to do on, on the barrels I'm going to paint the whole barrel white and then I'm going to spray this white underneath here and here not worry too much about how it looks I just want to get some good coverage because once it dries then I will cut out um, the tape for a mask and I can put that on then I can do the uh, olive drab so first thing I'm gonna do is paint the white and I'm using my trusty Iwata HP M2 now I'm looking here and this is perfectly 135th scale this print here so that's really really groovy so it'll be easy to make my mask so anyway first things first make sure we got some paint coming out and then uh, do the paint another reason I'm using gray is for this very reason If you'll remember from early on, this is uh, why I chose this particular scheme. Is it's very unusual. I tell this photo, or tell this color scheme on this kit. I've never seen this type of uh, paint job. Whoa, man! I'm sorry. I'm gonna get all kinds of up in the. A little too close on the old lens there. Let me back this off just a little bit. Doesn't need to be that close for this part of the. Uh, project I 
I have no idea how far underneath they went with this paint, but so I'm going to have to just kind of guesstimate here. Now because of this really cool paint job, I'm not going to really get too crazy with the uh, weathering because I really want to um, want it to be uh, That's probably good on that. <clears throat> I generally don't like to show all the paint job, but I'm going to make an exception doing this white here. It's really hard to do it. I was trying to video it, just so as you know. Alright, so that's that. So we're going to let that dry um, overnight. And in the meantime, I'll uh, start working on the masks. Okay, the white is done. So now I need to um, cut out a mask simulating this right here. So I've got a piece of tape, tape laid, laid, laid out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the vehicle itself to rough out where the hole ends and where <clears throat> it begins and I'm also going to mark where the mounts are for the bogies okay so I've determined where everything is because it looks like the high spots Go about where the bogies are, and um, it looks like they it looks like the curved part is right about where the bogey mount is. So I'm going to measure that, and that's about uh, looks like eh, let's get over here nine millimeters. So, I'm going to rough that out, 9 millimeters there, and 9 millimeters there. Draw a reference point there. So, um, the high point will be there. So it kind of fits over that. So let's see what we get going here. Yeah. doesn't have to be exact because it just doesn't and then it kind of goes up like that okay so that looks pretty good so I'm gonna cut it out 
and then we'll see how it lines up. Sorry if I'm getting my arm in the way, but that's a bummer. Okay, so there we have it. So let's peel this up. and see how it aligns on the kit. Okay, first I see already I need to make this a little shallower here. So I'll trim a little bit of that off. That fits. Whoops. something to help smash it down here. this and keep it in frame on this video. It's putting my hands at an awkward angle. Okay, you see what I'm trying to do here? I'm going to do it off camera so I can do it. Okay, and there it is. <clears throat> Made some shallow cuts here to get that conform to conform a little better. Same here. So that should all be good because I won't be spraying directly in there with my airbrush, so it should cover okay. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. I'm also going to do the same thing for the front, for the rear, and for the barrel of the main gun. Okay, so I got my masks front, back, <clears throat> sides, and on the barrel. So I am ready to start laying down my first color, which is going to be Tamiya XF62 Olive Drab. <clears throat> I am using the HP M2 again. Got my paint thinned ready to roll so let's get cracking here start painting <laughs> 